Art can be controversial. It can be a reflection of the time in which it was produced. At All Arts, we believe you should be able to view any work of art as it was originally conceived and performed. This program contains adult language. Viewer discretion is advised. Today we're going to be making collards, kale. We're going to saute some veggies first. You don't want this woody stuff. Yeah. Pull it away. Then you have all this lovely curly kale. My first memory is of being in the kitchen, and that's where in my head me starts. Mm. When you're stirring, stir from the bottom. Cooking methods have been passed on for generations. Our mothers and grandmothers and aunties, they were massively creative in the kitchen but they didn't get to live their life as artists because of their circumstances. And a lot of their artistry got overlooked. We wanted to share some of their history and culture and heritage and food with the, the young girls that we work with. Recipes get passed down through oral tradition. So food does tell us about what it is to be a black woman. Thank you for being here with us. Our Mother's Kitchens um, started off as a culinary and literature project for black girls, using the writing of black women authors um, and looking at the ways that they use food and language to express the black experience. These dinners are an opportunity for us to share the work that we've been doing with grown-ups. Each dinner is dedicated to one of the central writers that we work with. This dinner is in service and in memory of Zora Neale Hurston. Please consult your menu. These are quotes directly from Zora's stories or her letters, and we try to bring her alive through the food. This is from there as we're watching God. The white man throw down the loo and tell the nigga man to pick it up. He pick it up because he have to, but he don't tote it. He hand it to his woman folks. The nigger woman is the mule of the world as far as I can see. So Zora Neale Hurston doesn't polish the language to make it sound like something Proper. Her characters speak the way that folks spoke, right? They use black vernacular. She got a lot of criticism for that. I want you to know that how you speak is beautiful and it's perfect and it doesn't need to be changed in any way. I don't know that those writers are necessarily being taught in schools. We think it's important that black girls do get exposed to black women writers. We want the girls to see themselves as creators. It doesn't matter if they're 17 years old or 12 years old, what they have to say is a valuable part mm -hmm. of, of, of a conversation. I am what I am, and my am is specifically designed and formed for me, myself, and I. People can say what I am, but only I truly know of my am. We feel like we can trust one another, right? All right. We wanted to provide something that, one, we didn't necessarily get as young black girls. Like you see plants growing, so this is rainbow shard. Anybody know what this is? Kale. 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 Yep. An opportunity to have a supportive environment of sisterhood where black girls could just be free, happy black girls. I don't know that we're intentionally trying to be role models as much as people that young people are able to connect to. The community dinner is more so for an adult audience. However, we found a way to still include the, the little sisters that um, have attended our camp. Having the, the girls that were in the camp come to the dinner and be a part of that helps with that cross-generational mm -hmm. connecting or bridging that gap. They serve as volunteers, so they get to put into practice some of the things that they've learned. Cooking is an art, it is a ritual, it's more than just sustenance. Black folk, black women have used food to take care of one another, sustain their families, sustain their community. Anybody else want to share a little bit what they talking about? We talked about the idea of trauma and how like if you don't have support to be able to open up then it's like a lot of missing pieces in the story of you know uh, who we are. 
particularly around stories surrounding women. Like fathers and grandfathers are more willing to tell stories, but the, the matrilineal stories are not necessarily told. Those traditions like making sure, you know, you got your collard greens and your, your black eyed peas, like those were things that I remember my grandmother growing up, uh, my mother growing up. So just those food just brought up a lot for me, just thinking about family members that have passed on and just kind of not grieving them in a in a sad way, but celebrating them. Indeed. Just like we're doing here tonight. <laughs> it's important to never forget how these women contributed to our culture um, and how their work is relevant today, just as much as it was when they were writing. Something that I really hope that people walk away from the dinners with is that they feel free. I don't ever get to be in a space where everything around me, everything I touch is intentionally for me. You get this opportunity to learn about people in, in a way that you wouldn't have before. That's what dinner is supposed to feel like. Come to the table, break bread, and share your stories. Dance for yeah, I'm like, 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 I'